Before I could respond, the ground shook with explosions. Missiles were exploding all around us. I was not sure the bunker could withstand. This whole ruined city where we were encamped was being bombarded with nonstop missiles. It felt as if the world was being torn apart. I heard the Sudanese brother chanting Quran loudly. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful, all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. An explosion right above us knocked us both off of our feet. It took the breath from me. The Sudanese brother gasped for breath, yet he still recited Quran. The entirely merciful, the especially merciful, sovereign of the day of recompense. It is you we worship and you we ask for help. The door on the bunker blew apart and hot debris hit us. Pain coursed through my body. I felt sticky and knew I was bleeding. I just did not know where. I heard Sahid cry out in pain, but he never stopped reciting Quran. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor, not of those who have evoked your anger or of those who are astray. I mean, I looked around and all I could see was dirt and fire. I felt a hand on me. I turned quickly, prepared to fight, and it was Brother Sahid. He had pieces of shrapnel all through his body. He gasped for breath. I knew he was dying. I had seen enough death to recognize it. I took his hand. Pray with me, he gasped, spitting blood as he struggled to say each word. La ilaha, ilala, muamadur, rasulallah, he gasped out declaring his faith in Islam and Allah. He seemed like he could not see me. He looked up. We could not see the sky, only dirt and fire, and now lots of blood. But he seemed to see something I could not. Salam alaikum, ma'alik, amut. Peace be upon you, angel of death. He said softly and smiled. I kept reciting Quran Surah Yasin. By the time I was finished, Brother Sahid was gone. He was being judged in the grave. May Allah have mercy upon you and find you worthy in your first judgment, my brother. I whispered to him and closed his eyes. I gave him my final salam and waited for the airstrikes to stop, praying no more missiles would hit close to me and my brother Sahid. I waited for what seemed like hours. My body ached and I knew I was wounded. I was able to find my weapon and Brother Sahid's. I took them both. I placed a copy of the Quran I carried in my pocket with me everywhere I went on Brother Sahid's chest and dug my way out of the bunker. The land was destroyed all around me. The ruins were now nothing but rubble. The fighting was not yet done. I still heard lots of weapon fire. The stench of death was everywhere. I wondered how many times the angel of death would stand before me today and ask Allah, Is it his time, O oh Lord? The thought of it made me shudder. I took a big, painful breath of air and started off towards the weapon fire. I saw a lot of Israeli bodies everywhere, and some of their vehicles destroyed. I smiled. Brother Sahid's minds took many with him. Allahu Akbar, I whispered. Each step was painful. I headed towards the sound of gunfire and was careful to keep to the shadows. It was dark out. I must have been in the bunker a lot longer than I had thought. It was not pitch dark, and bombs and weapon fire lit up the night, so it was not difficult for me to find my way. I was not sure what side of the enemy lines I was on, but I figured the Israelis had advanced and pushed us back. So I advanced slowly and carefully. I held in my pain and ground my teeth so I would not cry out. I walked for what seemed like hours until I saw them. I was indeed behind the Israelis. There was maybe thirty of them here, and they had what was left of my brothers cornered. I had to do something. 
I had to find some way to give them a chance to get away. I looked around and could see nothing that could help me, so I did the only thing I could. I pointed my rifle at the enemy and held down the trigger. I moved back and forth, hoping to hit as many of them as I could. It all seemed to happen in slow motion, as if I were someplace else watching some kid kill these Israelis. Many of my bullets found its mark. I watched as they fell, startled, and turned to engage me. When my rifle was empty, I used Brother Sahid's. All the while, I thought of my mother. I remembered her touch upon my face and the look in her eyes before she died. I don't know how many of the enemy I had hit or killed. I just prayed I bought my brother's time to get away. I felt something hot in my chest. My breath was knocked from me. I looked around and I was on my back. I don't remember falling. I couldn't breathe. My chest felt like it was on fire. I heard screams and gunfire all around. Was I dying? Is this what it felt like to die? Oh Allah, please, find me worthy of you and forgive me for my sins. I started to pray. I was looking up like Brother Sahid did, hoping I would see what he saw. I wanted to see what made him smile so as he died. But I saw nothing. Ben, I felt something sting my face. I blinked and saw Brother Ahmed kneeling beside me, smiling. You are a true Mujahid, young brother, he said and picked me up. All that was left was him and three of the Iranians. He ran with me following the Iranians. I was not sure what was going on. I kept going in and out of consciousness. I tried to ask, but one of the Iranians hushed me. We stopped. I was placed on the ground. The ground did not feel right. It was soft and moist and smelled horrible. I turned my head and looked into the eyes of a little girl who stared lifelessly back at me. I was in a mass grave. Thousands of bodies were in here. This was one of many of such places that the Israelis had. They covered up the bulk of their atrocities so they could continue to play the good guy and act like the victim. I wanted to scream, but my chest burned so badly that each breath was a struggle. I watched Brother Ahmed and the Iranians drag some bodies over me. Be still, my brother, and inshallah we may survive this, Ahmed's voice sounded, as if he spoke from very far away. His voice was the last thing I heard before I was greeted by people.